As the title says, I sold my soul for a dishwasher. It seemed like a solid trade. At the time it was online, a guy was selling it on a local for sale sites, and the guy wanted like 200 pounds for it. I don't have that kind of money. And I asked if he'd be willing to go any lower. In a joking manner, he suggested that he'd sell it me for my soul, and even including free shipping and installation. Sweet Sammy writes up. He emailed some documents, which I didn't even read, I signed. And the next day, two men showed up and installed it. I was pretty smug and assumed the guy just needed to get rid of it and had a sense of humor. However, it's since come to light that I may have actually given away my soul. Oh, and souls are real. Who knew, right? Me being soulless seems to come with a few side effects that have slowly but surely begun to impact my daily life. I don't dream anymore. Instead, each and every night I find myself entering a pool of nothingness that I can't quite describe. Let it really have much passion for anything. Not that I was the most passionate guy around before. I'm what you call a go-with-the-flow type of guy. I don't laugh or cry. I'm never happy nor sad, angry or excited. Everything is inconsequential, nothing has meaning, I just am. Oh, and I can see the dead, which kind of sucks. I first realized I could see the dead when I walked into my apartment and saw a dead guy. He was just standing there staring at me. It was pretty horrifying. Honestly, I don't know how I knew he was dead. It was just an instinctive feeling I got. Plus C, sometimes slightly transparent which is a bit of a giveaway. He doesn't really talk to me either. He just walks around the apartment looking pretty mad, I guess. I would be too. I learned from a neighbor that he died from a heart attack caused by Viagra and that the girl had freaked and bailed on him without calling. The cops took a few weeks for him to be found when the apartment began to secrete a rather unique stench. He's still stiff down there naked. It's uncomfortable, sure but I don't exactly have the means that move somewhere else. Truthfully, he's kind of a chill dude. As far as the dead go, he just looks frustrated all the time. But mostly keeps to himself. Spends a lot of time in the bathroom staring at himself in the mirror. He leaves when I need to take a dump, though. So at least this considerate I call him Gary. Besides my ethereal roommates, the dead mostly wander around doing nothing. They can't really interact with anything, which I guess is pretty dull. There's not as many of them as you might think, because I suppose most of them move on to the next place. They're not all like Gary either. The vast majority that I've seen have disturbed me beyond measure, burnt walking corpses forever, crying out and yelling and screaming in agony, fathers and mothers following their families, crying out to be noticed, begging to be able to tell their loved ones that they're still with them, but having absolutely no way to do so. The children, and the worst, they don't have the means to understand what has happened to them, and spend their days wandering the busy streets reaching out for a helping hand that can't even perceive them. It would be tough to watch. Were I not well sold us anyway. I decided that it's time to get my soul back. It's more of a principal thing than anything else. I don't like the thought of someone playing with it. Touching it. It grosses me out. Plus. There's the whole eternal damnation thing, which is pretty daunting. The dishwasher has also started leaking, and I didn't exactly get a warranty. I hadn't managed to make much headway. Getting it back, there's not much solid information out there about reclaiming souls. Believe it or not, I tried contacting the guy who bought it to see if he accepts refunds. He hasn't replied to my messages, which is a bit of a dick move mostly. I've just spent my time browsing the internet and looking for a loophole. No. It's just luck so far. But I'm optimistic anyway. Last night I came upon some article on the obviously deepest recesses of the internet somewhere no living man has ever been. He was about five pages on Google. It was a ritual to summon and demon the decent starting point. And I figured it's not exactly like I can be dismissive of the supernatural any longer. I won't go into the details, but let's just say that it involved some candles burning some incense and offering up a series of foreign spices. I raided my neighbor's spice. Rack nothing really happened at first. I prepared the summoning as instructed. 
chanted the words as best as I could. Gary joined me sitting on the sofa. And watching, I wish it at least put a towel on before he sat on things. But each time, I suggested he just walk away through a wall or something. There's no sense arguing with some people. Eventually, I gave up. Sat down. Mixed the Gary. And turned on the TV. We watched a Netflix. I had a beer. Gary stared at his ghostly boner for a while. Not a bad evening. I'd almost forgotten about the entire summoning thing. When my apartment burst into a supernova of despair, green flames fraud and licked the ceiling emerging from an abyss that opened up on my floor. My heart grew still and my blood ran cold. Not because my landlord made it very clear that any damage to the wall and ceilings was coming straight out of my deposit, but more so because I was immediately filled with a daunting sensation that I had made a huge error in judgment. I may be empty, but the one thing I could still feel was fear. Apparently, I suppose it's instinctual. A residual survival instinct left over from when I had been truly alive. A voice emerged from the fire so deep that I could feel the vibrations weaving through my bones. It was familiar, but utterly alien at the same time. A voice I'd heard a thousand times but also never at all. My brain immediately informed me that I should be running away from whatever a natural hell escape I just welcomed into my home. My knees seized, making that impossible filth crap and filth running over the mountains of flesh and bones and bile people piled together in pits and hands and arms outstretched towards the sky. A mass of men and women pulling children or screaming and begging and crying out clawing at each other and trying to pull themselves from the pit of their own waste like maggots festering in a wound. My words caught in my throat, the inside of my mouth trying in an instant. All right. Okay, noted now. If we could just go back to the issue at hand, there is pain. Unimaginable. Oceans of pain. That to drag you down into a depth of horror the likes of which the living cannot even begin to comprehend. Voices screaming, eternally for mercy, from a God who cannot hear them. Parents trample their children, but for an instant of relief from the ceaseless torment, storms of acid rain down upon the yeah, yeah. I got that now. I really do have some questions. If you have a moment, I get the feeling I won't be able to do this twice. Ask then mortal but know that words cannot convey the true reality, that the weights all that walk the earth, there is no escape, there is no heaven, there is no justice, there is only pain. Yeah, I got that. Well, I guess I just wanted to know how to go about getting my soul back. I don't feel like I was misled on the whole deal, really. I'm just starting to think there's no union. I can really take my concerns to the fire grew dim for a few moments as though it was pondering over my words. My apartment grew silent. Gary looked at me bewildered. He apparently deemed what was occurring more important than his eternal erection. Juice won't be here, mortal, for such a petty concern as a soul. I, who has forged the empires and tempted saints, whose name is forbidden in a thousand worlds, for fear that I shall return to reap what is owed you, dare bring me such trifles. The crackling and the flames seemed to turn into more of a taunts from the damned. I could see faces within them writhing out with mouths outstretched, howling into eternity. Some looked at me with pleading eyes as though I was a savior to free them from this misery. Others had no eyes at all. Only he who has claimed over your soul may return it, and only from his own free will. Souls cannot be stolen or claimed. They can only be given freely. Okay. That was something I could work with. I stood up, took a few steps back from the flames cautiously. I hadn't thought about how I was supposed to end this summoning because I honestly hadn't expect anything to come from it. Hindsight can really bite you, I guess. The laughter grew louder until it filled what felt like the world winds. Howled outwards, carrying whales with them. But each told the tale of a different torment. A few beads of sweat weaken forming on my brow. My stomach turning into knots who holds your soul. I cannot say mortal, but you have more pressing matters at hand. You may be soulless. 
but you will still feel every single one of the sweet pleasures that damnation has to offer you. Will come with me now and taste the sweet nectar of true suffering. From the black abyss that covered the ground an outstretched hand emerged, the palm larger than my head. Its skin was ashen, gray cracked with veins of pure fire. The nails were sharp than knives and scratched the deep grooves into my wooden floor as a beast pulled itself upwards. You are mine now, you will come with me. Willing or not, there is no escape. You will witness firsthand my dominion. I will tear you limb from limb and then reform you whole to experience it all again. Your memories of life will fade and only suffering will Gary stood from the sofa and walk towards the abyss in all his naked glory. He raised an outstretched hand from which a pillar of light shut forth and almost blinded me. I can still see spots the beast roared and screamed its arms shedding into dust and falling into the darkness the flames were through with it and with a sudden gust the hole vanished into nothingness. Gary looked at me shrugged and walked into the bathroom to stare at himself in the mirror. I didn't ask. So that was yesterday I've spent the night processing the entire ordeal and figure. It's time to start looking. So if anyone knows a guy that trades use the pines, is four souls. Let me know I'm open to suggestions as well, if anything develops. I'll be sure to let you guys know for those who aren't in the know, not too long ago. I sold my soul for a 200 pound to use dishwasher. This has proved to be a rather irresponsible decision as I'm now a soulless husk who sees the dead. Oh, and the dishwasher has started leaking a weird brown gunk all over my kitchen floor which kind of sucks. I recently made the decision to reclaim my soul, which has turned out to be kind of tricky so far. My endeavors have led me to summoning a demon in my apartment who attempted to drag me back to hell and violate me. Don't worry, my naked ghost. Roommate Gary vanquished him. I think he is a permanent ghost boner and super weird anyway. It turns out that the only way to reclaim my soul is to be given it back by the guy who I traded it with. Simple stuff. Surely not quite. I've been unable to contact him online because the douche is ignoring all of my messages that pretty much exhausted all of my options. So, I decided it better to just embrace the soulless lifestyle, sure. It has its flaws. I now couldn't leave my apartment without witnessing a parade of deceased souls, and the foreboards inside my apartment's weather had briefly been a portal to hell. Now leaks the tears and howls of the damned. But I guess nothing's perfect. I could grow customs they're dead, and I'd already covered my floor with a nice new rug that muffled most of the cries of the condemned things were looking up. That is until I made a solid breakthrough in the search for my soul through my exceptional perception, cunning and intuition. The newspaper had read, Need new stove, perhaps fridge freezer call. Now we'll accept best offer. Now accepting souls, it seemed a bit too. On the nose to be a coincidence and made the call, got an address and embarked on my journey of soul reclamation. Gary joined me in. I sensed this was just another average Tuesday for him. A journey took us to a downtown marketplace. It is early morning and the place was filled with people, setting up stalls of strange meats and fish, novelty decorations and knockoff clothes. The dead were everywhere. Gary approached the one, a weeping woman who stood in the middle of the walkway. She was dripping wet from head to toe, her skin a strange tint of blue and her arms slashed from wrist to elbow. He stood in front of her presenting himself. She stopped weeping, knocked Gary up and down, and proceeded to continue weeping whilst walking away. Gary looked like he let out an inaudible sigh. I guess. Even in death, rejection is hard. Undeterred, he walked over to another. I decided to leave into it. You do, you, Gary. The actual living souls were busy unloading vans and pitching signs and I wondered where it was that I would begin my search. The coal hadn't been very specific on the exact location of this trader of souls, so I'd guessed I'd have to do a bit of legwork, maybe give a few people the rundown, maybe play a little good cop, bad cop, with my spectral sidekick. One thing, was certain it would be a grueling day. Oh, you want Dave? He's right in there. 
the fish salesman pointed towards a warehouse at the other side of the market, and me back the newspaper clipping I had given him. The warehouse in question looked deserted and the only entrance I could find lay down a dingy eyeway, locked with thick rusted chains. The whole place screamed murder as they approached the alleyway. A hand grasped my wrist and pulled me back. You don't want to go in there, an old veiled woman who informed me in a thick eastern accent. No good in there, child. Oh, really darkness. Her skin had the feel of dry plastic and was a smoother sandpaper. Right? I'm actually looking for a guy who has my soul. My hair, his name is Dave. She let go of my arm and began taking steps backwards, locking me up and down as she did so. You, you are a natural tainted. No, 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 no. Evil. Unclean. You leave be gone. She began gesturing me away with one hand, another reaching for a talisman around her neck, and gripping it tightly. She began hissing, and I got the impression that I wasn't wanted. I continued down the alley. Getting inside proved rather difficult. The door was locked and as rusted as they were, the chains wouldn't budge. There was a small window overhead which, after a great deal of exertion and strain, a man should climb and squeeze through landing hard on the other side. Gary rejoined me and just walked right through it. Ahead of me lay a barely lit stretching hallway. Graffiti stained the walls, covered in obscenities and foul depictions of genitals, smeared necks of the doorway, and what I assumed was red paint. Were the words abandon all hope dickweeds? The cool wind ran through the length of the hall and the darkness felt heavy. I looked at Gary, who was busy comparing a detailed depiction of a male, member with his own phantom limb looking defeated. He walked ahead a lifetime must have passed. Alston walked that hall if they're like hours rolled over in two days. But at the same time it felt like no time had passed at all the way in which we'd entered, had long since disappeared into nothingness. And yet we reached no end. The hallway was ceaseless. My eyes adjusted to the darkness, as best as they could. But I stumbled occasionally and fell flat on my face more than once. Gary attempted to catch me at one point, but I fell right through him. I appreciated the thought, though. After a long while, or maybe just a few minutes, I suggested we should probably turn back, and that no good would come from walking down that hallway forever. Gary looked as though he was cool either way, so I took the initiative and began to turn back. There's no escape. Her voice whispered from the darkness everywhere and nowhere. It was soft, almost childlike. You cannot escape eternity. Another voice joined it into a whisper, but distinctly deeper and croaked. You will wonder this place until the stars bleed out and all light fades from the heavens. My third voice, this one. Louder and almost taunting a slight laugh in a tone, your feet will grind the blood and dust, and even then you will crawl on mangled stubs and still come no closer to salvation. More voices pitched in, as though every speck of darkness was reaching out and singing. Similar horrors into my mind. The chorus of the macabre. And morbid. I'm actually looking for Dave. Do you guys know where he is? Or the voices burst into manic giggling and laughter inside my mind, louder than anything I thought possible. My head throbbed with the weight of it all, a few trickles of blood beginning to drop from my nose. I could taste iron in the back of my throat. In synchronicity they spoke, and each word was an explosion inside my skull. Lost little lamb cries so we can taste that. Tears scream so that he may find bliss in the melody suffer. So that we may make you pure, embrace us from all around. My being hands outstretched. They gripped clothing and skin and hair, dug into bone and hooked on the tendons, pulling and pushing and yanking and splitting and tearing and laughing and screaming and ripping in lights turned on overhead. And I found myself writhing on the floor alone. There were no hands, no voices in my head. We were in a large warehouse floor surrounded by boxes and crates and trucks. Gary stood behind me. Still make it as ever. In the center of the floor sat a young guy on a fold-out garden chair. He looked no older than eighteen and wore dirty overalls and a black beanie. 
He waved. Hey. I balled myself to my feet, dusting myself off. That was weird. Yeah. Sorry about that security system call. Right? Had a few too many breakings lately. He announced, sipping at a thermos. He gestured for me to approach you, Dave. I asked, rubbing at my back. Which ain't fiercely. Yep, that's me. You here for the stove. I got a couple left good condition too. Almost new. The next few minutes were spent with me explaining that I wasn't in fact there to purchase a stove and was in fact trying to get my soul back. I explained that I traded my soul online. He apologized for not responding to my emails, got me a coffee and tasted like manual labor. He was an alright guy. Really, he was even willing to trade back myself for the dishwasher. So long as I paid him a small accounting fee, we settled on 50 pounds, which I wasn't too pleased with, but figured it was probably the best deal I was going to get. He shook hands, and he went and fetched the water damaged box filled with junk and began rustling through it. I know I had it here somewhere. No, not that. No, that's Jimmy's worded. I but damn, that's right. He closed the box and scratched this jaw. Well, what's wrong, I asked, as he started the pace back and forth. Yeah, a bit of an issue, buddy. I traded a whole bunch of souls yesterday, and I think yours was one of them feeling slightly displeased at this revelation. I inquired to whom he had given my soul. It's, uh, right. I'm not 100% on this, but I'm pretty certain that your soul is now in hell. Yeah. Like 99% sure, he went on to explain that he had a regular trade deal with some demon they've gave him souls, and the demon gifted Dave with rare antiquities and ungodly security systems. It was apparently a no-go-back kind of trade, and getting it back was pretty much a lost cause. I was beginning to think that I'd wasted the entire Tuesday, Dave, however advised me that all was not lost. He could simply open a gateway and we could go and get the soul. This, of course, came with an opening a doorway to healthy, but they ever showed me that he did. In fact, except credit cards after the payment cleared, they've went about drawing all sorts of chalk symbols on the wall to the warehouse floor, each appearing to be from a different language that I imagine nobody has spoken for a very long time. When that was finished, he smeared an odd scarlet liquid across the symbols that he got from a jar and coupled this with a brief reading of scripture. Gary wandered around, and I did a Sudoku, right? That's that. Now we wait. They've announced his hand on his hips. He looked quite pleased with himself and frowned for a moment and licked his thumb, rubbed a little bit of chalk from the wall, and then returned to looking pleased. It should open any minute. Now we waited for seven hours. They filled me in, and the whole soul trade business and how he had gotten into it from his grandma and was trying... To bring the industry into the 21st century, he had only been telling it for a couple of months. But things were on the up and up. He was even thinking about setting up his own website. So does your friend wear clothes, or is that a stylistic choice? Oh yeah, that's Gary. I muttered, taken aback. You can see him clear his day. So he nodded. Gary nodded back. I got the sight, as my grandma used to say, spooky stuff, right? Well, I'm not sure I... A low groan emerged from the wall like the bricks themselves were in pain. I put down the coffee I had. Been nursing. They've jumped to his feet. Related yes. Finally, small features began to appear in the brick, cracking like outstretched veins from them. A thin fog began to seep outwards. The lights overhead flickered and instantaneously he erupted into a shower of sparks and glass. You've done this before, right? I asked, the fog sank from the cracks and began flowing across the ground. Shapes of brick began to crumble and the chrome grew louder still. Oh yeah, tons of times they've had to shout at this point, just to be heard over the ceaseless thin of the opening gateway. Well, maybe not success. The world as I knew it exploded. The wall erupted outwards, sending chunks of brick and concrete flying. They flew with it dust and rubble and blood spraying from where he had been standing where they had once been. A wall, a gaping hole into nothingness. Now stood a swirling vortex of boding darkness. 
The air all around began to move towards it, like water down a plug hole. The ground beneath my feet was gone before I knew what was happening, and I found myself falling through the air towards the vortexes. Gaping more, I was pulled ever inward, swirling it, screaming and howling into the madness of it all, and then I wasn't. I was on the floor in the warehouse. Where I'd been only moments ago for the second time I stood and brushed myself, off and coughed up what nine out of ten doctors would call a concerning amount. Of blood disoriented, I reached for my coffee and took a sip, which immediately spat across the ground. It tasted like crap, like actual feces. I threw the cup on the ground and looked around. Yeah, I was still in the warehouse. But everything seemed slightly off the walls that had once been slightly dirty were now layered in a thick coat of rust. The air was heavy and dense and the ground was coated in a fog that had seeped through the walls earlier. The gateway was gone and the wall that stood where it had been was coated in all manner of filth. I could see my breath escape my lips and my whole body shivered in the cold shadows, darted around the peripheral of my vision, and the groan that I'd heard earlier is now a steady hum in the distance, ever so faintly. In a distance I could hear screaming. Gary stood beside me, I swallowed hard. The only comfort I could find in the moment was that Gary looked as disinterested as ever. He began to walk forward and I followed, I descended into hell, guided by my own fully erect Virgil.